Welcome to I'm Zia Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here with co-host Will Townsend from More Insights, and we're creating a new series called What's New in Security. Will and I will be coming to you every couple of weeks on the latest and greatest in this uh, fast-moving market. Um, uh, Will, I think, uh, uh, you know, maybe a quick intro on yourself? Yeah, yeah, so I manage the networking and security practices for More Insights and Strategy. Been doing this for about 10 years now. Yeah, yeah bring 30 years of experience in corporate America yeah. to my coverage areas. Yeah, so we thought a good place to start would be the Splunk Conference. We're both here at .conf in Boston. Uh, Splunk acquired by Cisco a little over a year ago. Two years uh, ago, I thought. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's been a couple years yeah. now, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the, 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 I think though this is the first .com where Cisco's fully been integrated, yeah. and there's actually a lot of product integration, and so, um, uh, initial thoughts on the show. What do you think of this show? Um, I love the energy. Yeah. I, I got to meet Buttercup. I had no <laughs> idea who Buttercup was, uh, so I got a selfie yesterday, shared that on social. But I love the energy, um, the innovation. It just sort of, it just sort of feels like it oozes from the conference. Yeah. yeah. What, what I, one of my big takeaways from it is, uh, uh, you know, we were even talking to some people waiting to get in the keynote yesterday. Yeah. Is while Cisco has acquired Splunk, the Splunk kind of community has remained in place yeah. and Cisco's added to it. And a lot of times when you have a company the size of Cisco buy someone, um, eventually that community fades away. And I, but I think Cisco is very aware of yeah. the impact of the community. In fact, G2 Patel, Chief Product Officer Cisco said on stage, yeah. companies can make good products, but communities drive movements. Absolutely. And And so they've been very aware of trying to keep that community in place. Yeah, and we've seen that yeah. with other companies as well, right? You know, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Aruba, yeah. with the Airhead community. And it's important. Um, culture is important. I've been through a couple of change of control <laughs> events in my career mm -hmm. that some went well and some didn't go so well. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so one of the things I think uh, that everyone, all industry watches, has been looking for is why did Cisco buy Splunk? Yeah. If you talk to a lot of financial analysts, they would tell you that paying 24 billion for a company who does four billion revenue and is margin accretive isn't really a bad deal right. in, its, in of itself. So if all they did was bring it in and add it that would be fine, but they've actually done a tremendous amount of integration. Yeah. And uh, they, they had a whole bunch of announcements yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the place to start, uh, Cisco Data Fabric, which yeah. is, um, uh, they took the concept of you know, Splunk's, um, uh, the way they ingest data and they can access it you know, from uh, places of rest and broaden that out. What were your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's super powerful and the focus on machine as well. Um, that's the most unstructured data on the planet, right? And this leans and leverages uh, Splunk's capabilities. And one of the big reasons why Cisco acquired Splunk was for that data, that yeah. data layer, right? Yeah. So very impressed by yeah. that. Yeah. And what's it, what's interesting to me too is that um, when when uh, Chuck Cisco CEO talks about their role in AI um, on the earnings calls, he talks a lot about. Uh, Cisco infrastructure to enable companies to do AI. Right. But if you look at all the data they have from Splunk data to Cisco telemetry, Thousand Eyes, Apti, yeah. Meraki data, the list goes on and on, you know, collaboration data. The whole full stack observability. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they actually have more infrastructure data than arguably any other company around. And yeah. I'm, I'm fascinated to see what, how they monetize that because that is a, you know, any, like lots of companies can build infrastructure, and we can argue about yeah. whether Cisco's is better than somebody else's. Right. But from a data perspective, that really is a pretty unique asset. It is, and it really, it's a key differentiator for Cisco as well. And they've been on this observability journey for quite yeah. some time, even before the acquisition of Splunk. You mentioned Thousand Eyes, uh, App Dynamics, Acedian, Sam knows, and what Splunk does is just, you know, it, it brings just a, a further level of depth to what yeah. they're doing with FSM. Yeah, and so from a security perspective, uh, you know, if you think about uh, SOC operations and observability, they were kind of separate. Yeah. But I think Cisco's argument, and I think this validity to it, is that AI, or sorry, in the AI era, security and observability are two sides of the same coin. Sure. And so if that's true. And network assurance as well. Yes. Would, would be included in that. Right, right. And yeah. so if you think of so networking, security, and observability, who else has all three? I mean, there's good security vendors, there are. there's really good observability vendors, right. um, and there's other network vendors, yeah. but no one's actually put, put the three together. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I totally agree. I mean, that's, that's spot on, Z. And, uh, you know, from my perspective, we're beginning to see that innovation. And what I really like is the bilateral collaboration that's going on. So you mentioned the Cisco Data Fabric. 
that's powered by Splunk. Um, we also uh, heard this week um, about the integration of Cisco's AI Canvas that was launched at Cisco Live earlier this yeah. year. It's now integrated into Splunk, and so I love how the, the bilateral collaboration and engineering efforts are going, and, and really it's, it's one plus one equals three from my perspective. Yeah, well actually, that, so that was really interesting. They rolled out AI Canvas, and when I talked to the AI Canvas team about it is, they didn't want it to be like yet another dashboard. And I right. think, um, uh, I've often poked Cisco about this, that if there was, uh, 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 if there was a magic quadrant for uh, single panes <laughs> of glass, Cisco would be far the runaway leader because they had so many. Right. And they're, they're, they're trying to consolidate those down. And so the goal now yeah. is to take AI Canvas integrate it into Meraki, integrate it into Catalyst Center, and integrate it into Splunk. Right. And then eventually, you know, everything will roadmap to the same dashboard yep. to AI Canvas, but for now, yep. you can work in Splunk and then bring up AI Canvas when you need to, and, uh, and it can go through, you know, do all those insights when you want to go multi-domain yeah. or, 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 you know, multi-people, right? So, yep. um, I thought the way they rolled it out was pretty cool. No, I agree, and what this is all doing, from my perspective, it's really delivering on Cisco's vision and ambition to create a platform, right? And we've seen the success of platform in the security space with Palo Alto Networks yeah. and, and others, and this is truly, that, that's what it's doing. It's the glue that's bringing everything together from my perspective. Yeah, and uh, I think you and I both met with Tom Gillis. And, uh, we did, yeah. yeah. I love Tom. Yeah. I love the Tomisms as well. <laughs> yeah. But he, he was very clear about that, that when they acquire companies now, one of the criteria they look at is how easy it is to integrate into that platform. Right. So you might be able to go out and create great, great technology, in fact, he was. We were talking about one of the identity vendors just recently, Boppo, and the competitors, and he said they looked yeah. at him as well. But the amount of work it would take to integrate it into the Cisco platform was would, made it just prohibitive. Sure. And so now everything Cisco does should be to add to the platform from an acquisition perspective. Where I think, you know, one of the interesting things G2 said on stage yesterday is he was pretty honest. He said Cisco used to be a holding company. Yeah. We used to go out and buy all just these. Just go companies. acquire a yeah. company and then and then figure out a fit, right? And yeah. it's a different strategy now. Like you know, and I spent time with Tom as well. And the strategy is we're building a platform and then we're looking. If it, if it makes more sense from a time to market perspective to acquire a company, we're going to go acquire a company, or we're going to focus on the organic roadmap development. Yeah. So in parallel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now also from a product perspective, they rolled out uh, their agentic operations yep. for Splunk. Right. Uh, this is, to me, is going to be, I'm really fascinated to see the uptake of this, because yeah. um, uh, you know, on one hand, engineers are going to look at it and go, oh, it's doing our job. Yeah. And I've heard this song before. In fact, I remember, talking to some doctors at Mass General a couple of years ago, they had put some NVIDIA stuff in to look at MRIs, mm -hmm. and the doctor, one of the doctors said to me, he said, first, all the doctors were dead said against us, you're not looking at our MRIs, we're doing that. Exactly, but then what they that's realized, their value add, yeah. yeah. No, no, but the, the treating the patients is their value add. True. And so yeah. he said, but pre-AI, they would spend about 80% of their time looking at MRIs, trying to diagnose them, we're only about 20% treating patients. Yeah. Now it's flipped. Wow. Right, so okay. I think for the SOC engineers, Agentic may scare them a little bit, yeah. but I think at the end of the day, all that stuff that they do, you know, the, looking through log files goes away. And I thought one of the things that got a big cheer on stage was using Agentic to create documentation. Right. Right, because yeah. like, who does that well? Oh yeah, and, you know, <laughs> incident reports. Who wants to do that? Yeah. Who wants to create a situation report, right? Yeah. And that's the value, and it's going to free analysts and, and SecOps teams to do more value added work, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to help them be more efficient in the research and with incidents and that sort of thing and drive faster mean time to resolution. The other thing I love about Agenta Z is that it finally addresses what I think has been a big hole for Cisco, which is their automation strategy. Through all the acquisitions, they have all, they had all of these different automation suites. Now, Agentic AI can go address that very, very broadly. Yeah, yeah. Now, you mentioned the platform and it's something that G2 Patel, their chief product officer, has been pushing since you took over. Yeah. How do you think that's going? Um, I think I think they're well on the way um, to get there. Um, it takes time. Um, it's been, for my estimation, 15 to 18 months since they set this vision. Yeah. So, but I mean, you know, Cisco Live. I mean, the payload there. You and I wrote about it. I I wrote about it on Forbes. It was tremendous. And um, and now, you know, here at Dot Com. It's just, uh, it's building upon that momentum from my perspective. Yeah, Partner Summit's coming up too, so expect more there. Yeah, we'll both be there, um, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, I think this is something that Cisco has lacked 
really for a long time. You know, prior to being an analyst, I was an engineer in a yep. bar. And we I was a product marketer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we sold a lot of Cisco voice over IP because of that platform approach. People just yeah. inherently believed that when you ran Cisco calling on a Cisco network, it worked better. Yeah. But somewhere along the line, through all these acquisitions and fiefdoms. Something got lost. Yeah, something got lost. And yeah. so there was no real benefit of Cisco security and a Cisco network. And uh, you know, if you if you think about like the whole concept of the smart switch, yeah. it turns every port into a mini firewall. Sure. Right? And so um, in fact I, during his part of the keynote yesterday, Tom actually said eventually you won't need most of these firewalls. Appliances, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's so much more efficient because you're 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 bringing networking and security closer together. You know, the smart switch. This is a new category for Cisco. They've they've taken it, you know, you know, very very broadly into very different domains. And and what I like about you know having a DPU on a switch is that you can embed security and network services, and it just works better. Yeah, it's more fully integrated. Yeah, well. You know, clearly when you've got all these agents performing things and devices moving around, and if Jensen's prediction of the next wave of AI be physical AI, yeah. we'll have more autonomous things running around right. our, bu our robots, businesses. You know, yeah. so we have and robots running around Austin, <laughs> Texas right now. Yeah. It's kind of freaky. <laughs> uh, but I don't believe you can actually secure things using perimeter firewalls anymore. Um, it just, it just, you know, I guess if you had infinite dollars, maybe yeah. you could, yeah. but it's too expensive. And even if you did, the operational cost would be so, so high and so burdensome that it yeah. it wouldn't make any sense. And so you know, and I think traditional firewalls too, they're almost like a beacon. They're almost like flashing out there, yeah. hey bad actor, okay, yeah. you know, here I am, come come, you know, come, you know, infiltrate my yeah. network. So yeah, yeah it's got to change. Yeah, and so if you look ahead uh, at this you know, Cisco Splunk, um, uh, you know, let's talk about what we'd like to see and I'll I'll, I'll go first. I, I'd yeah. actually like to see Cisco be able to take a lot of the data and insights they have and apply it to business operations. And I saw a little yeah. bit about that at NRF. Uh, Brian Bedford in the Cisco booth showed me they had like a combination of Meraki data and Splunk data and they were able to show retailers like how their store was performing, you know, how people moved around it, things like that. But, yeah. but that gave them a much better idea of, um, you know, being able to measure every store against each other from a performance perspective. And sure. I, I think um, Cisco's never been great at selling to the line of business, uh, but I think in these areas where they get really competitive with some of the bigger IT vendors, yeah. being able to go around IT and go to the line of business would actually be a real feather in their cap. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I mean, from my perspective, what I'd like to see Cisco do a little bit more, be a little more preemptive with, with the security yeah. stuff. So, you know, Tom, Tom came back, um, Tom Gillis has done a great job, you know, driving the portfolio strategy and the depth and breadth and all of that. Um, a lot of it is reactive, you know, they're, they're, and Cisco is focused on what's important, endpoint, identity, you know, all of that. But, you know, a more preemptive approach uh, would, be, would be beneficial. I mean, considering, maybe consider DNS security as well. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the majority of malware payloads are delivered, you know, through, through DNS queries. So, yeah. um, that's what I'd like to see them do. Yeah, actually DNS security is one of those no brainers that I don't know why every company doesn't yeah, run. Yeah, and you know, and NIST just recently with its you know most recent publication uh, recommends it as a key focus yeah. for for any security architecture. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And uh, the other thing I'd like to see actually is a little splunkiness brought to Cisco. Okay. I, I thought the, yeah. the you know the kind of funkiness of the audience here. Uh, used to be that way at networkers a long time ago, and yeah. now Cisco Live. But yeah. uh, you know, isn't Cisco's really kind of corporate now? Yeah, you know, very conservative. Yeah, right? yeah, and I'd like to see a little of that swagger. Yeah, come back to Cisco. So well, and, and as I've met with executives, I mean, many of the executives that I met um, are former Cisco as well. Yeah. So I think the cross pollinate uh, cross pollinization will happen over time. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you. I mean, I love the culture. I just love the vibe. I love the energy here. And this is my first full dot com as well. And I'm looking forward to coming back yeah. for, for more in the future. All right, anything else you want to add? I think I'm good. I think that covered yeah. it. Yeah, no, I think that was a good episode. So thanks for watching the inaugural episode yeah. of What's New in Security. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with episode two. Uh, so on behalf of Will Townsend, I'm Zia Skiravala from ZK Reaching. Thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and also hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time on What's New in Security.